Hello everyone, this is the legendary Iron Man XCOM 2 Exquisite Timing Run. My name is Saiken. For those of you who are new to the channel and just turned in because you happen to stumble across this video, welcome. For those of you who watched the entire run, um, welcome as well. I will promise you that uh, if you watch the entire run, all of the 45 minutes of this video, you will not be disappointed because it is quite literally one of the most enjoying missions. If you disagree with that and feel that you've wasted your time, feel free to comment, um, but I can almost give you a guarantee that that will be waste, uh, worth your time. Now, with that out of the way, let's set the stage uh, because this is actually not a live um, a demo or a live uh, play-in, but it is me reviewing my own uh, playthrough. The reason for this is I recently bought a new microphone the sound quality by revisiting and rewatching the video was not up to the standards that I would like in such a great uh, video. So I will do the voiceover and actually talk you through what's happening. To set the stage, this is the final, final mission in uh, the final room of the water world of um, a legendary Iron Man run. Um, it is July 13th. So according to the War of the Chosen um, achievements, this is still within the exquisite timing uh, frame. Matter of fact, it is the world's first exquisite timing on legendary Iron Man difficulty. On top of that, I do have permanent dark events um, ongoing. So four pretty harsh uh, dark events are running, uh, making the enemies even stronger. It is completely unmodded, so what you're going to see uh, is not made um, easier in any stretch um, of the imagination. And on top of that, the only way to even get here was to forfeit any sort of upgrades. So I have the base equipment from the very start, with one exception, a mine shield and um, a little bit of ammunition that I scraped by through the proving grounds. No weapon upgrades, no breakthroughs, no arm upgrades whatsoever and not even colonel ranks so we only have one major rank the rest is captain and even sergeant at this point and i'm still going to go up to the last mission i needed to fight all three of the chosens two of which are dead at this point so rest assured that there will be a third one the hardest one the warlock in that final room so the odds are heavily heavily stacked against me I'm not going to spoil how it ends but boy, oh boy, we're up for a treat. So without further ado, I'll hit play and we'll just try to narrate uh, through that. Um, keep in mind that you are probably not going to hear sound because I don't use a separate uh, sound um, file from the actual in-game sound. Um, at times, I might switch to the original sound of the video, but I'll just talk you through that really epic moment uh, when the whole um, thing began, uh, began to crumble down. So my first thought here is um, I wanted to make sure that we're going to approach the um, the first pack with uh, the avatar and the two um, uh, archons in the most optimal fashion. We're simply going to uh, skip time here. I'm reloading until you can now see that essentially all of the cooldowns are ready, which is uh, the sign for me to go in. We're using the Reaper uh, to spot them out. Mind you, uh, the Reaper is not going to trigger the pack, but if anyone else who's not in range uh, would uh, uh, would see them, they will be tri uh, triggered. I'm using target preview to stay just barely outside of uh, reach. The field uh, right between the uh, Commander's Avatar and the Reaper, for instance, would have triggered them. Since I've played the last mission numerous times, I by now know quite well how to sort of position myself and start. The idea of the entire team here um, is to kind of have a really uh, tight formation because the avatar will teleport and the teleportation of the avatar is limited to the line of sight that each of uh, your um, XCOM operatives have. So in other words, if you keep the line of sight kind of clustered, they cannot teleport to the other end of the room. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, the avatar into play by essentially shooting at him. Uh, Zirkim here, our sniper, has uh, the option to uh, to have um, ability, um, armor penetrating ar um, rounds. 
which uh, ignore the armor. So that's why we were starting. And the real reason why he started and no one else is, I wanted to deal as much damage to them as possible in the first round. Doing so, I'm using the only character that has uh, a somewhat decent equipment, which is the commander's avatar, essentially forcing him to uh, use the dimensional rift, um, not ending the turn and leaving him with yet another action. You will see that at the very end I will use mind control of this turn so that I keep the vision range as small as possible but at the same time uh, still keep that um, action um, uh, available for a little bit later. The avatar nicely positioned himself and I thought uh, to myself, okay, how about we're amplifying uh, him? We clearly don't have enough uh, equipment to give him a flashbang and therefore prevent him from teleporting away. So might as well try to burst him down as far as possible. Mind you, when you're playing with um, uh, only ballistic weapons, five armor is an incredible amount of armor. So luckily, as you can see, our Reaper here has um, Shredder, so we're going to use um, the Banish right away to um, uh, remove all of the armor from the Avatar and yeah, not make him an easy kill, but get him close to death, which is exactly what I wanted to do to begin with. Um, we are trying to hit him even further. Renvin here uh, tries to take a shot, unfortunately, does not fully kill him. And now we're in this weird spot where we could kill the avatar, but it would get us a bit out of position. I still decide to do it, mainly because um, you don't want to deal with the avatar afterwards. He was poisoned. If you're interested, um, the regeneration of the avatar, which is five, still ticks before the poison ticks. So he would have healed back to six and then the poison would have dealt one to two points of damage. Um, essentially, yeah, uh, not making it worth our time. We're trying to use uh, the remaining time from Hogbite as well as possible, essentially shooting twice because we can't reach him with our melee attack. We're then using eight protocol, um, which has a threat assessment on top of it. And I'm using that on the commander's avatar because he has the biggest gun by far, uh, dealing the most damage. So it's an optimal choice. Plus I'm using the entire action economy of the specialist. I'm seeing very often in XCOM, uh, in the XCOM uh, Reddit that people complain about the specialist and even say that it is a weak class. And my only comment to that is um, clearly those people who are of that opinion don't really know how to effectively uh, play the specialist. It's by far one of the strongest classes just due to the mere fact that he has an incredible good action economy. All right, so we started with a pretty strong start here, which was to be expected because we got the ambush, but now things are maybe going downhill a little bit. The first pack that comes in is a triplet of codices. And that in itself is, let's say, a bit of a suboptimal um, back to begin with, because with ballistic weapons, what you're going to encounter with codices is that they are really, really tough to kill. They will duplicate uh, whenever uh, possible, and you will end up with a lot of codices. On the other hand, since they can teleport, you cannot really ignore them to begin with. Secondly, we're now seeing uh, the chosen. Uh, for those of you who are, um, yeah, not uh, who haven't followed the entire run, he can summon enemies um, with his Beastmaster. He has a regeneration and low cover, so it's pretty hard to kill. Plus, has five armor and uh, sixty hit points at this point. One thing that I learned um, on the exquisite timing is, specifically with the chosen, the game simply assumes you have played for more than a year and will put the Chosen in at their very strongest point. 60 hit points, 5 armor, all of the abilities maximized as if they would have gone through 4 iterations of training. So it's not really an option to, um, to kill him, yet at the same time we don't want to be mind controlled by him. So we are in a difficult spot to begin with. 
So how would we want to deal? I'm, I've, I'm just, um, whilst I was playing that, I was a little bit disappointed to see him come in at that side. Normally you get one spawn on the left-hand side and one spawn of the, on the right-hand side. So I guess it was bad luck. What I'm trying to do at the same time is using our mind control to the best of our abilities, just essentially yeah, moving over to the left-hand side and offering a good target for the Chosen. At the same time, we somewhat need to get ourselves in position and we, like I said, cannot ignore the codices. So I'm putting the only person with a mind shield closest to the Chosen. This is deliberate because I hope that he's going to use his mind scorch, uh, which is normally the first thing that the AI does, trying to incapacitate someone with a dazing uh, blow and uh, try to abduct information from them. So that's really why I uh, did that to begin with. I'm now pondering just um, what to do. Doing a couple of no regret moves, which is re-stealthing, um, kind of uh, reloading and getting myself into position. The reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that I've done all of the things that I could do before moving on. We're taking high ground with um, Renvin. Mind you, he is not high enough of a rank yet to really um, have Salvo, so his action economy is bad. And the reason why I'm now trying to split even further, um, uh, or the codices even further, is uh, my plan is to <coughs> sorry, set this here up for a nice um, uh, attack by Zirkim. Zirkim essentially um, is our sniper. He has face off. And in my mind, I go like, okay, if, if we can just hit them all hard enough, then they will uh, replicate, uh, will um, be of lower hit point value. And I could make sure that we can kill many of them. It will be a strategic mistake, um, all things considered now when reviewing it. But at the time when I was doing it, it all made sense because I can deal two to three points of damage with the pistol. So um, the all of the movements in in themselves uh, in themselves have made sense when I was doing them. Unfortunately, there was a dodge involved, and we're going to miss a couple of the shots. So it's not really that productive to begin with. The teleport here certainly doesn't help and all of a sudden many of the low hit point codices are really out of range. I then ponder, hmm, should I go with the null lens? But somewhat decide against it, mainly because I felt that um, when the avatar is showing up, I want non-resistible damage that is ignoring cover. And that was more important for me than to deal with a few codices. I knew that the codices will probably not be a big problem to begin with. I I figured, hey, how about we're just getting them down? You can see an 80% shot unfortunately missed here. And now a face off to hopefully kill three of them. Turned out that, of course, we're dealing minimum damage and minimum damage. And uh, we're killing at least one. Problem is the second uh, one that we dealt minimum damage against is now replicating. And we're ending up with really a lot of one hit point codices. Certainly nothing that I would suggest you to do um, when you're dealing with them. It, it just, it was not the smartest move. It was um, planned to be smart, but then I effectively outsmarted myself and lost a lot of damage by moving the, um, the commander avatar a bit too late. I could have used him much earlier. Here I'm pondering whether or not I should kill um, a few codices with the null lens, but ultimately decide against it and then say, you know what, let's just reduce the number of um, codices. Could have done that, by the way, much earlier. And I decide to use a mimic beacon, mainly because I don't want to get mind controlled and I am not super keen in letting the co uh, codices uh, run behind our lines. Now, at round number three, what we're going to see is finally the next avatar shows up. They show up in the least comfortable position for those of you who are unaware of the spawning in the last mission. That can happen. Um, the second avatar can either spawn to the left um, end or to the right end. And technically, since they move in your direction, 
when you t uh, camp the lower um, left side corner, you would want to have the avatars uh, going um, to spawn on the right hand side because then they will already start to move in your direction and you have enough time to kill both of the avatars at the same time. So that didn't happen. So I was even un more unlucky with my spawns. On top of that, the avatar is accompanied by more uh, archons, which I certainly don't need to spend any time explaining why they are an incredible annoying enemy if you are dealing with uh, ballistic weapons only. Unfortunately to us, on top of that, we're seeing that uh, the Mind Scorch has hit our sniper. So that's really a problem. And the only positive about this entire round was the spawn of those three Vipers here, which somewhat is acceptable. Low hit points mean we are doing quite well. Okay, so we're in a tough spot. Got one Mimic Beacon down. For um, full disclosure, we had two Mimic Beacons. We unfortunately lost a lot of momentum uh, by uh, yeah, getting uh, Psionic bombed, which emptied the magazines of a few weapons. But I still felt like, hmm, how about we're, we're trying to yeah, tank most of these guys here. So I'm putting Blazing Pinions in. That is going to let every single one of them focus on the Archon. So the Archon plays the Mimic Beacon for one more round. I also acknowledge and realize that we have a lot of focuses, um, a lot of um, uh, codices on the battlefield. So we got to deal something, uh, got to do something about it. Considering to use uh, Vault here with our Templar, mainly to uh, to get uh, the avatar out of uh, concealment. So it's not the worst idea to do that, but I hold, up, uh, hold off um, on it and instead uh, think about how we can actually start to shred him. Moving up to the closest point with Renvin would be in an exposed position, but, um, and Renvin is our um, uh, our grenadier here. So if we were to move up to that closer position, uh, we would uh, have the chance to shred the cho uh, the uh, assassin. No, not assassin, avatar. I'm sorry. Uh, we has, uh, would have the chance to shred the avatar, which is exactly what I would want to do. But we got to deal with the really exposed position that he is in. I start doing a couple of no regret moves, which is really trying to remove uh, the dazed effect and trying to reduce the numbers of enemies that we're dealing with. Um, with our specialist. Again, that specialist just uh, got us an entire action of our um, of our uh, sniper back, plus killed another uh, codex. So very, very strong round for the um, specialist. And I'm still pondering, like, how do we really engage with that uh, avatar? The problem here is, we're exposing ourselves a bit too far, then we would need to somewhat make sure that uh, Renman here is still staying safe. And I'm thinking about, could we be in that kind of full, uh, full cover and still reach him with a grenade? Realizing that's probably not going to happen. Renman coincidentally is also the person, as you can see here, who has uh, the second Mimic Beacon. So I can't even, if things go south, use the Mimic Beacon to remediate that. I decide nonetheless that we can't waste time. Uh, every single round that we're doing nothing will be just held against us. So what we're going to do is we're um, using the grenade and chopping that in. Mind you, um, just waiting uh, and letting them stand uh, in there wouldn't have really gotten us anywhere because uh, the um, blazing pinions only work at the end of their turn, so all of them can effectively move away. Downside, of course, is as so often uh, when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to kill a larger group and there's a codex in there, you kind of end up with um, uh, with separating the codex even further. So we've spawned yet another codex on top of that. Good. What I'm thinking now is we still have two more armor to go. So how do we want to deal with that? The only explosive that we have available at this point 
is a claymore from our um, Reaper. So I'm trying to find a position where we're not in the psionic bomb and where we're close enough to throw that claymore um, and maybe even um, explode it in the same round. So we're placing it right there and I'm trying, uh, let's see, it's a good um, uh, example of using your time efficiently. I'm trying to use our sniper who does have quick draw, so he could take two pistol shots. I'm using a pistol shot which is worth two points of damage to instead turn it into eight points of damage and uh, three, uh, three points of shredding, which got us into a really good position. Trying to use Shadowfall here um, just to get into concealment. That is mainly to not be mind controlled in the next turn because uh, the Chosen still has that going for him. We're, uh, we're taking a tight formation again, uh, moving our Ranger or our Assault out of uh, the uh, Psionic Bomb and using his most effective um, attack, which is coincidentally melee attack, which is way stronger than, which is way stronger than um, his shotgun, uh, because it is way easier to upgrade that. My frugality with the psionic um, lens or the null lens was paying dividends here, as I can now capitalize on the original uh, cooldown that I've saved. And I was hoping really that the um, avatar would find a good position, and I. I got rewarded to a degree, uh, which I felt uh, good with, but I also kind of came up with the math. I can't really kill him, only 10% chance to, to crit him, which is really not enough. I went through almost all of uh, my um, abilities and we're still in a situation where there are five codices um, alive. So I'm now thinking can I use uh, Volt in order to turn uh, kill maybe a Codex and uh, damage the Avatar? And then I'm pondering really what is most important. And when, in case of doubt, think about what your position next round is going to look like. So what I'm, uh, what I will do here is I will effectively go for the Codices and kill two of them, simply due to the fact that cleaning up the battlefield is in this particular case more important than bringing the avatar close to death, specifically since he's going to regenerate. So I can't capitalize on it this round. I got to kill the extra five hit points next round anyways. I'll decide to stay in full cover. Unfortunately, can't do much more than that. Um, going through like all of the options, I was trying to hit a triplet, but that really wouldn't work out for, uh, for me. I was hoping that I could kill all three of the codices. Yeah, and it just didn't work out. Now, learning again, if I would have been more forthcoming and more decisive with my initial engagement on the codices, I wouldn't be in such a bad situation to begin with. Um, lesson learned from my side, if you can't kill the codices and you don't have a flashbang to deal with them, which was the problem to begin with, then you just might want to ignore them for now. Good, so that ended the turn. So far I was confident, but boy oh boy, I didn't know what I was up to at this point. I felt everything was going so well. And then all of a sudden, three of these advanced mechs come in. And mind you, the advanced mechs are not easy to deal with. Three armor, um, 24 hit points, is nothing to sneeze at, specifically since they do have unresistible damage within their rockets, and specifically since they are really, really fast. So what I'm doing now is I'm just praying um, to hope that the um, Archon will tank as many shots as possible, which for a long time was true until this year happened. The um, opposing um, avatar showed that um, not only his mental capabilities are something to be afraid of, no, but he can also hit for 10 plus with his normal rifle shot, essentially ripping the um, Archon quite fast. 
and as a result of this everything started to fall apart luckily this one here was missing because elsewise um, Renman would have been in a pretty devastating uh, spot I am uh, tanking some of their uh, taking some of their fire in uh, full cover um, this year is relatively speaking lucky but I would still have had deflection going this year on the other hand is not so lucky at all because I was hoping that the mechs would stay away as far as possible and it didn't work out the casual mind control that happened here was a planned exercise from my uh, from my uh, end all along if you remember that the target that he had chosen before was uh, the sniper and we have put Zirkim here into concealment that plan worked nicely so when the entire uh, dust settled at the end of round three I found myself already outnumbered and pretty much overwhelmed so I knew we can't stay in this um, spot for much longer it is a really 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 bad spot to stay in uh, and to begin with we do have one more mimic beacon which we're probably forced to pull but let's do the first things first and actually get down that chosen because he is um, our main target we have no more archon so there is no backup plan whatsoever and unfortunately with the archon um, disappearing the chosen also is standing in a spot where we can't reach him and this is really where I was pondering for what appeared to be ages to think of a good strategic move I didn't want to move further in because all of my game senses basically told me Saiken you gotta run to the exact opposite side this here is going to be borderline suicidal you don't want to spend your time on the side I made the call at this point already to completely abandon the left hand side and move to the right hand side three mutants still four codices now one um, heavy uh, mech um, and a couple of archons plus the chosen on uh, top of it are too much to handle not with ballistic weapons and certainly not with an additional spawning unit every single turn so that was the decision for me to get out of here I used the only person who could actually hit him and hope for a nice teleportation and I shouldn't be disappointed that here was absolutely fantastic and I felt good yeah, this could be a really good option for me to yeah, reload and um, kind of start anew I thought hmm can we kill him and that would even give us untouchable probably not a bad idea to begin with but we would be standing in the open and I didn't want to die uh, with our uh, ranger so I decided to reload and take the shot knowing farewell that we might um, get a couple of hits onto the chosen avatar uh, the commander's avatar but that was okay because he is regenerating and now what I'm doing at the same time is let's move away with everyone else I knew where the last um, avatar was going to spawn we certainly couldn't be bothered to continue standing here for now so instead of fighting which we would have lost by the way I was trying to do a line of side play and knew farewell that that might come at the expense of losing someone um, I was aware that Renvin here will throw the mimic beacon and that might yeah, deter one or two of the enemies but certainly not six seven or eight at this point we were fighting against more than a dozen enemies and it was just hopeless uh, to do that I figured how about we're moving up and how about we're reloading and we're just really taking that um, other side moving up with Hayward and being in a safe spot by the way this year will turn out um, to be one of the worst uh, moves that I have made and you will see very soon why that is the case I gave away the threat assessment and the overwatch uh, plus the extra defense to the commander which I still think is a fine turn but at the same point I was so so focused on making sure that I get out of there that I almost took it for granted mm, that we can 
stay here behind cover and will not be flanked at all, which mind you is going to be a downfall. I could have taken different choices and in the hindsight when now watching that I sh probably should have done something different, but that is hindsight 2020. Um, at this point I was calculating how could I get the most space between me and the majority of the enemies so that I'm just taking a few hits and not too many. The main problem here is that with no armor upgrades almost everyone is a, so a single hit and I knew that I would be um, dead as soon as they would uh, be starting to hit me. Last pack comes in, two elite specters, two elite um, priests and the chosen so I knew at this point way way too many hit points were never going to be successful in um, attempting to kill them. We need to focus on the chosen. Uh, on the avatar and this is where my live commentary was going um, slower and slower and I was less and less motivated because keep in mind I was like on the brink of um, knowing that this might be the very last time that I'm uh, that I'm even seeing most of the soldiers and that I would probably need to rerun the entire run if this here is not working out so I was I was furious about the the level of spawns that were coming in um, and just that um, I couldn't keep up with the amount of enemies that were coming in. Mind you, one of the things that um, if you haven't watched the entire run that was specifically frustrating is I was two days away from researching armor upgrades and with those upgraded armor I would have had way more options for <clears throat> additional mimic beacons, additional flashbangs and so on and so forth. So you name it, um, even more uh, defensive items. So I was in my mind, I was pondering all of this. Hey, Saiken, why didn't you do that optimally? And then this year happened. First flanking shot, I was I was already um, disappointed. Then he moved in and I saw, OK, I clustered up. Yep, there we go. Um, lost all of the cover and just the amount of movement uh, that all of uh, the three um, robots uh, so all of the three advanced mechs had was devastating and at that point I was I was almost um, almost at the point of saying okay this is probably good game but one thing that I've uh, learned in XCOM is Losses are part of uh, the deal and if you're trying to do a world's first you will encounter resistance. So we're down two uh, by simply being overrun. Mind you, you can now speculate for a long time would a different turn and uh, positioning them differently uh, would have saved them. The answer is probably not because the fact is there were three vipers on one side, um, two um, uh, uh, elite specters, two elite priests, two mechs. So that's already 10 uh, enemies with far more than 120 hit points, probably 150 hit points on one side plus an uh, avatar. And on the other hand side, we had three mutants, uh, four um, uh, codices, two, uh, two archons and um, a few other minor um, enemies plus another mech and the chosen. So probably 200 hit points at either side. It is very likely that something is going uh, to ha happen to you. Now, what I did is I did the mo bold move and said, okay, we got to get rid of the armor of the chosen. I didn't have sting up anymore. I didn't have any um, option to shred him other than just using my normal shredding shot. And my normal shredding shot hit, critted, poisoned and shredded him for two. I knew at this point that it is a high likelihood that Bones, our Reaper, would be dead. I unfortunately was unlucky and he got revealed, so we lost the 50-50. Um, keep, keep in mind, um, Renvin, our heavy weapons guy, is um, completely panicked at this point. I couldn't do anything. You see him here on the right-hand side. Um, so we only have three more turns to take. And I was thinking at this point, how could I position the uh, commander's avatar to maybe survive one more round. Give me that one more round um, because I want to somewhat reach him and, and see if I could uh, take him down. 
Um, I knew Renmin was almost dead, but I also knew that the AI was um, having a tendency to ignore um, uh, berserked or panicked um, uh, soldiers as long as you can do, uh, as long as they can reach someone else. So we're moving through suppression. Got almost killed here. Unfortunate deflection didn't trigger and we're continuing to hit the chosen. I couldn't use, um, I couldn't use my, um, I couldn't use my uh, Amplify um, because we couldn't see him. So we're down to two actual turns as this here is unfolding. I see, you know what, we, we could move up and we, we maybe could hit him uh, with a nice little rift, but that would be a hell of an open position. Every single position that I could take is open and we do have at least three um, mechs. So in my mind, I go like, well, how about we just move there and and uh, try to hit him? Because we have lost either way at this point. If we're not killing him, uh, this is certainly over very soon. We're using a dimensional rift, um, uh, which just came off of cooldown. And I'm even pondering the idea at this point to hopefully, um, uh, or to, to even go for other options. But let's be honest, no matter what I'm doing, uh, this is not going to work out. Not even if I was to kill like three or four of them, uh, those losses would be replenished next round. And we, we were running out of steam, heavily out of steam. It's like the Mike Tyson who had used all of his power in the first two rounds. If you haven't uh, KO'd the guy at this point, you're in for a rough time um, if, if you're taking that analogy. Anyways, we're hitting him, Chosen's down to half hit points. I didn't have a good angle, so what I did is essentially moving over with Zirkim. Uh, I didn't want to be hit by the other, um, uh, by the other uh, mechs, and we're just ending the turn. I was quite clear um, that at this point I would probably be done with the chose uh, with the uh, sector port and the two um, um, our, um, Andron Andromedons coming in. It was sealed. Like we're not going to fight uh, those uh, number of hit points. That's a hundred hit points right there, uh, plus a lot of um, armor on top of it. So the only way for us to really win this is to kill him next round. If if our cho uh, chosen avatar, so commander's avatar, is even surviving. Luckily for us here, and this is just a really incredibly fun part to see, uh, the AI decides to position and want to go for the commander. Um, so they are ignoring um, our um, uh, grenadier here. As mentioned before, um, the Reaper died and unfortunately his bond mate uh, goes berserk, which means I just realized, you know what, in the last round of this episode, I will not only be down uh, three guys because three are killed. So we're at four soldiers. One of them is even berserked. So we're almost entirely out of actions all together. We have three more actions and we got a chosen um, an avatar that is just not going down. I was not having it. If you can could hear the live co uh, commentary uh, during this time, I am mumbling and stumbling because I was trying to keep it together so much, but my mind was already thinking about what could I do better the next time. But I cannot always preach that you shall not give up and and kind of uh, persevere and then not do it myself. So I was uh, really looking through that, found out um, our commander's avatar is not going to be killed. That was the shot that was missing and I was like, Oh, holy Lord, how is that even possible? That was a shot that could have ended the entire campaign. Instead, we're getting suppressed. And uh, luckily, Renman here, our uh, dem uh, demolition expert, is not getting killed. So how incredibly fantastic is that? The avatar tries to mind control the nearest target. We got a mind shield just snickering it off. That is perfect. Uh, the mind, uh, the priest comes in and says, hey, daddy, uh, if you can't do it, let me try to do it as well. Uh, well, uh, shocker, he couldn't do it either. So 
the AI certainly hasn't uh, played optimal. Um, and I was at this point, um, I, I was kind of in between ecstatic uh, because uh, mm, I might even have made it and a bit dis disillusionized because I still knew that we had about 25 hit points and two armor ahead of us. So how is this even going to work out with three? It is not. I was, I was sure that that would be the end. Luckily, all of the overwatch here was taken away. And now let's take that in. I was thinking, how on earth am I going to maybe kill him? Got only three, turn, uh, three turns uh, or three actions. And that is it. Look at uh, the hit points of the avatar, more than halfway full. We're counting probably 25 at this point, plus two armor. Mind you, we got three actions and three actions only. I'm thinking, should I go and try to flank him? Well, that could be a start, but is it really worth it? Where is he going to teleport? Could Hogbite reach him? I knew he could teleport throughout the entire map and Hogbite probably, so Hogbite being our uh, Templar, wouldn't be able to reach him. I figured the maximum damage that Hogbite could be doing would be to amplify using his last bit of uh, focus, like the last, really last bit of energy in his tank and just trying to do it. But uh, there is still armor left over. So I, I was thinking, should I go with um, Renvin? Should I really try to move here and try to shoot into full cover whilst being suppressed? That's not going to work out. Um, couldn't get a high ground, couldn't really get a flanking angle. Um, I was very sure that that is not going to work out. So I'm essentially uh, discounting uh, his option to, to shred him. It would have been less than a 30% shot. And you can't, even in those situations, ignore the probability. So what I'm doing is taking the slightly less optimal approach and I'm banking on um, getting a few crits and additional amplification in. It was clear that it is almost lost. Might as well try what we can. And here we go. We're running in. Hogbite um, on his last leg is uh, trying to go in. Um, small chance to crit really. But luckily he did uh, uh, did crit and actually dealt seven points of damage. Cool. Chosen, pretty hurt, pretty um, injured, but maybe we can do even better than that. Look at that. We even got a flanking opportunity. Moving out into the open here with um, Renvin. I don't care if Renman dies next turn because there is there is effectively no next turn anyways. If we're not pulling it off this turn, um, I will not be able to pull it off at any point. Hitting that 90%, nice little crit and uh, shredding him. And at this point, I'm like, okay, this here, this is surreal. Let's try to get as close as we can. The guy still has too many hit points. We're not going to do that, but might as well try. If we if we move into that full cover, can we squeeze out that one more round? I was so desperate at that point, um, and I was like, well, we have seven hit points. Uh, is one of the mechs really missing? I was trying to calculate if we move there, that will not uh, let us be flanked by the mechs. But then I figured, you know what? There are um, a lot of vipers on the other side. This is all bullshit. I am going to die um, and we're being suppressed. So we got to get out of the suppression, take take the overwatch shot and just get that penalty removed, the penalty to hit. So I'm going as close as I can towards uh, the um, avatar. And mind you, the entire run is on the line at this point. Taking a shot, literally being uh, reduced to three points of health. And here we are on the very last moment. And I want to use the actual sound for once. Wait, 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 we're not going to show what it is. Back 10 seconds. So I want to use the actual sound for once. And I want to show you just how that was. See, he has 
13 hit points. I knew I could only deal 9 to 10 points of damage, but I had a 43% chance to critically hit him. And let me show you just how that went. There's a chance for crit. If we crit, this would be game over. Come on. The fuck is going on? I actually did it! Oh my god. Oh, holy shit! That was so close. Oh lord, I actually did it. Oh. Guys, I did not think that I would be able to pull this one off. How is that even possible? We lost half of the SWAT. It was the very last action that I uh, could have done. Exquisite timing popped up down there. Oh boy. I don't know. I mean, just from the uh, the way that the last mission went, that was probably the hardest last room that I fought ever. Oh lord. I I did already have the who needs Tigen achievement, so that didn't pop up on top of it. But we did it without any upgrades whatsoever. And whew, that was uh, close. Just remember, in this very run, um, we we needed to start with a lot of um, scientists just to begin with. Needed to rush the laboratory just to have a, a chance to get it done. Needed to. Uh, just ignore almost everything, no upgrades, nothing, pure storyline. Always needed to go into the uh, Golden Path missions uh, when they were ready. No turning back. Needed to fight all of the three of the Chosen with ballistic weapons, no armor upgrades, nothing in the final uh, battle. Matter of fact, the whole research was just tailored towards um, and geared towards um, uh, finishing it. Still lost Hayward uh, and uh, Quick Feet in the final room. Almost uh, used no um, consumables during the entirety of the normal um, first two um, episodes of this final mission of Waterworld before getting to the final room. And the final room was tough as nails. At, at some point, I thought we wouldn't be able to uh, pull it off. And then we were just using that flanking shot, 50% chance to crit, bam, and the uh, the avatar uh, goes down. It was literally our last um, action that was available. Couldn't have asked for a better um, ending. That's That was the second attempt in doing it. Uh, you might ask yourself, why would you have uploaded the first one to begin with? I just wanted to... Whew, yeah, so I I was then going on about the first uh, on and on about the first uh, attempt and why I wanted to um, upload it, but that concludes essentially the um, run here. I think that that was probably one of uh, the most enjoyable missions that I've ever played. Probably one of the most memorable finishes of one of the XCOM runs ever. And um, I leave it up to your judgment. Was that uh, worth your 45 minutes uh, watching, yes or no? Please leave your comment uh, down below. And if you've taken enjoyment in this and think that that uh, world's first legendary Iron Man who needs Tigen exquisite timing plus permanent dark events was actually um, worth something, then feel free to hit that subscribe button and join the channel. Much appreciated. See you all in the next run, guys, and take care. Oh, before I forget it, one last word. I'm still looking for suggestions for the next run. So maybe you also want to post if you do have an idea for an upcoming challenge. I'm all ears. Take care, guys. And see you very soon. Bye-bye.